Welcome back to Sprague River Homestead. So the most diabolical week, the most diabolical week is back. It's hail week. Time when we put in 10 tons of hay in a couple days. So this year we're going to do something a little different for you guys. We're going to do hay week, the hail week. Put everything up. Got my GoPros. We'll get you a little live action of how it goes. And then we're going to give you an update on what's going on with the rest of the farm. So, we need to do some rearranging in the barns. Kind of make a room. And then we're going to get moving some hay. For those that have recently joined the channel, here's our barn setup. So we have a barn that gets hay. So if you can kind of see where this door lines up, we go from there all the way to the wall. Nikki's taking down this fence, which keeps uh, basically everything out, really. Uh, we take it off, we stack hay in here, so you can kind of see in the far wall. This is leftover from last year, so that's eight bales, but it's two stacks of four. Now this two here, we're gonna stack that up and actually move it out so we can put new hay in, but this will go to about five tall, almost to the roof. The next one will go to six tall, and then we'll carry that pretty much all the way across to this door. That gives us roughly about five ton inside this barn. And if I pan around, you'll see that over on the other barn is the same similar setup. These are actually mirrored to each other pretty close. So that will also get about five ton of hay right in there. And then we will be done for the year. So we get about 10 and a half ton. And then we've got somewhere around a half to a three quarter ton left from last year. We're gonna sit outside to feed out and throw a tarp over it just so we can uh, take care of it. So Nikki's gonna drive the tractor. I will be loading onto the pallet from the trailer and then offloading from the pallet into the barns. And we do this in three loads. It's about three and a half ton or so, or three ton per load. And I think it's about time to go. Ready to go driver? Yep. Let's make it happen. So there you see one whole uh, load on the trailer. We already had about eight bales in here. 
that's another 60 so we've got 68 in here now uh, just kind of roughly doing the math it looks like we can get another two tons in here which is about another 36 bales give or take so we'll have roughly 104 which is pretty close to six ton in here the boys barn will take whatever we can get so we had only set out to buy 10 to 11 ton we already still had about a ton left so yeah we ought to end up with uh, pretty close to six ton in each barn by the time we're done so welcome back to day two of hail week we pushed really hard today and after today i don't like i can call it hail week anymore because we are done so today we pushed hard we got two loads of hay uh three and a half tons each put away so for the total of 10.5 tons and we had about a ton sitting here so now we have about 11.5 about what is that 23,000 pounds of hay to put away for the rest of the year and it's done so as you can see behind i'm standing in the buck barn you can see how high it is it is one two three four five six seven stacked tall up in there so we use the tractor to uh, unload kind of like we showed you in the the quick footage there with the gopro so you can see we stacked it there nikki carries it over with the tractor gets it close i lift it up toss it in there and we are done. So let's run over to the girls' barn. I'll show you theirs because they actually have a little bit more hay in their barn than in the boys' barn. So here is the girls' barn. It's a little shaded in there. But they're actually a little bit taller. So they're in the... I think they're in the eight range. Eight tall range up in there. So the boys' barn will have approximately about five and a half ton. Uh, somewhere in that range, the girls will have six ton of hay. That will get us through. And the girls go through, they have more goats in here, so they use a little bit more during the year. That's why we have more stacked in their barn than in the boys. But uh, we're still working on all the fencing. So we had about a ton left from last year. The goal is to use less hay, get it uh, longer out, and not buy as much next year. Uh, or nearly buy about the same amount. It's a dollar a bale less this year, so we bought 180 bales, which costs us $180 less than we did last year. So, really good day to be done in less than 36 hours. We are complete, stacked out, and no real injuries other than some soreness. So it's time to go get a big beer, some ibuprofen, a little dinner, some sleep, and then Nick will take you for a walk around the gardens and greenhouses in the morning. All right, so welcome back to the gardens. <laughs> uh, everything, everything has been doing not so very good this year. Uh, we've had a whole bunch of frost and freezes that have put pretty much everything back on its heels a little bit. My potatoes have been burned off about three times, so the plants are still only... Well, this is the better bed of them, and you can see they're only up about that far. Uh, the broccoli, for some reason, has struggled, I think, because we go along at 50, 60, 70 degrees, go to 90, come back down, freeze, and the plants just aren't real sure what they're doing. Um, this is cabbage that's been in for a while, also not doing so good. Um, the only thing that is doing really well in the garden right now is lettuce and kale. Uh, you can kind of see over here my kale bed is doing great. The celery has been kind of off. Uh, my chard, for some reason, refuses to grow this year. Biggest I've gotten is about an inch and a half. So I don't know what the problem is. We've got plenty of uh, compost in the soil, just as we always do. So I'm not real sure where our issue is. The only thing I can imagine is it's temperature because the water has been consistent. Um, I'll kind of take you around and show you some other parts of the garden that are doing pretty good. And uh, the thing with gardening here is some years everything's great, some years nothing is great. We just kind of take the highs and the lows with it. Uh, there are some herbs that have done really well in the past that are doing nothing this year. My mint in particular just, just keeps burning off. Um, but the thyme is doing really well, the horseradish, and I'll show you the strawberry bed which has just gone nuts. Okay, so there is the aforementioned lettuce. Now this is oak leaf. There are a few weeds coming up in there, but 
Um, this is stuff that I actually planted last year and was out of seed for. And so I kind of left it alone and let it go to seed, not thinking too much of it because I don't have the best luck with stuff self-seeding here. And lo and behold, this spring, oak leaf lettuce for days. Um, so we're kind of letting it go. I'm going to try and do a better job at getting the seed this year when it goes to seed. There's another variety of lettuce in there. You can kind of see that little green leaf hanging out in there. I think that's probably Grand Rapids. I'm not real sure. So, also doing really well, the aforementioned kale. Now, these great big three kale plants you can kind of see. Um, in particular, this one, this one, and the little guy. Whoop, they're right there. Um, they actually overwintered, which I've never had happen here. So those kale plants are all last year's kale plants. And they are a, I want to say a dwarf blue curly is what all that is. It's one of our favorite kinds. I've also got some Tuscan. I've got uh, the Russian red grown back there. Everything's starting to do okay. Now these guys just got transplanted a couple weeks ago. So not doing the best, but not doing terrible either. Um, now that's the chard. And like I said, the chard I pre-started in the greenhouse didn't even make it that big. It's still alive. It's been watered. Um, so some of this is coming along. I need to, I need to uh, thin some seedlings now that I've got some of it coming. That right there is a peppermint stick celery. Just real pretty stuff. It's kind of a red and white stick. Um, and then down there I've got some new greens coming up and some spinach. The new stuff, I cannot for the life of me recall what it's called. Um, there's some, you can't see them on camera, but there's to the right that what looks like a big empty spot. Um, oops, right there. Uh, that big empty spot right there is uh, Chinese spinach. It's real pretty pink and green stuff I got from um, Baker Creek Seed Company. Anyway, it's coming up. It's not doing great, but it is coming up. So we're waiting to see what's going to happen there. Um, we'll kind of continue on down this row a little bit. My onions are doing fine. Um, you know, I usually can do all right with some onions. So this year I really didn't grow any reds. I had a few reds left that were going to, to try and sprout in the pantry. So I did go ahead and put them in the ground. But most of these are just whites and yellows. We seem to use them the most. Now this has been the most perplexing thing I've ever seen in my life. So... I, if you followed along with us for very long, I usually have just fantastic broccoli, right? Usually we're already harvesting broccoli. Um, this year I ended up with 48 broccoli plants. And this is what's left. It's horrible. And it's weird because one plant will do fantastic and the next one's a little tiny. And then we get some that are dying and then they're fantastic again. I didn't do anything different with my bed prep than I usually do. I moved them. Um, you know, I rotate them around bed to bed. I have no idea what the problem is. We had rows of beets in here as well. And you can kind of see that guy in the middle with the red stems. And there's one other one down there. That is it. <laughs> Out of three 12-foot rows of beets. That is all that's made it. Uh, some of that has been frost and freeze and downright snow. So it's been kind of a rough year for that. And then you can kind of see my garlic bed that desperately needs to be weeded down there. So I'll give you a tour of the potatoes. <laughs> and yes, it is July and that is all the bigger my potato plants are because they have burned all the way off like three times now. So that's one bed. I usually grow four beds of them. Uh, we've got some nasty little sticker weeds in there this year that I need to get out. But that's it. That's as big as they are. It's been kind of frustrating. Uh, we get our original seed from uh, Potato Garden. Now this bed is actually doing the best. Which is weird because this is usually the bed that does the absolute worst. So I'm not real sure what's going on with that. I know we've got good compost because it's the same compost we always use. It's our, our uh, mix of rabbit and uh, goat barn cleaning. And it's aged as much as we always age it. So I'm not real sure what the problem is. 
If you've got suggestions for me, please feel free to leave them down in the comments because holy cow, I am kind of at a loss. But you can kind of see very, very little. They are at least coming back up. In years past, I've had where they've burned two or three times and just given up. These guys are at least coming back. Other things that have done really well is for the first year ever, I have Brussels sprouts that look fabulous. The ones last year started doing all right and then kind of floundered. I do have, amongst all the weeds, some lettuces there and there. This lettuce is doing fantastic. I'm going to have to pull the seed packet out and see exactly what that is, but it looks like I've got some leaves ready for harvest there. But you can kind of see, you know, they're getting, they're getting little sprouts. I've got to snap some leaves off. But, uh, yeah, Brussels are doing real well. This bed of cauliflower is growing. It's not growing very well, but it's growing. However, the exact same plants planted at the exact same time are dead in the next bed. Again, the exact same compost, the exact same, because these beds were halfway empty. So this has actually got some garden soil blend in the top of it. Um... But yeah, same exact watering schedule, the whole nine yards. I have no idea. So over here, we've got corn. If you've been watching, you know that I attempt corn every year and I fail spectacularly. This year looks like it will be no different. And uh, the frost got them. It burned them clean off. We got all the way down to like 25 degrees. I had them blanketed, but just not enough. Uh, you can kind of see where the blankets overlapped in the middle, so we do have some, and we've got a whole bunch of little guys that are trying to come back. I don't expect them to do anything except make glorious, glorious goat food. You might remember my video from separating out my chive plants. Now these guys look a little ragged because I have been harvesting them quite a bit this year already. Uh, but these are the new beds, so we've got this guy here, and these guys... And on, and this is the original mother bed, which it's even getting hard to tell that I divided them last year. You can kind of see some soil, but it's going to need divided again before it's all over. Um, the peppermint, believe it or not, is usually, for some reason, my peppermint always grows huge. And it's usually up to the top of these stakes, which is about 14 inches tall. This year, we are maybe six maybe so i'm not real sure all i can imagine is it's wild weather uh the bee balm is coming along these thyme plants are a little bit small some of these are new uh this is an older thyme plant she's doing glorious and of course i might actually get around to harvesting some horseradish this year because that thing is looking fantastic there are actually three horseradish plants in that box with some apple mint that I grew to just kind of fill out the box, which is just going everywhere, as mint will do. Uh, strawberries are doing okay, but again, uh, the plants look fabulous. We had lots of blossoms this year. We've been watering them just fine, and I don't think we're going to get any berries at all. Um, I haven't seen anything. I kind of see down here. See, they just kind of... They flowered, they started, and they just kind of died. So I'm thinking it's just the weather. I don't cover my strawberry plants. If they are in fact dead and it does look like I'm not going to get any strawberries, I'll give them a couple more weeks. Uh, these guys will start getting chopped out of here and uh, moved before, hopefully, before they do any more spreading. You can kind of see there are rings there and there where they started. And they are now uh, encroaching on my cat mint and kind of uh, the rhubarb bed and everywhere that they could run or to. So I did start some other boxes. We've got one over there. We've got one over here. Um, there are a few little plants in there. And those back there are actually hula berries. I got some uh, hula berries on clearance here the other day that looked terrible, but I'm nursing them back to health. They will go back in this bed. And if time allows, we will add a few more strawberry beds back here in this empty spot. 
which is the always been the long-term plan. I've got a hack of rose bush, some wild rose bushes out of there. And back over here, so that's my catnip. She's um she was put in the first year. There's actually two of them there. They were put in the very first year we were here, so they are um five and a half years old, five years old. Looking fabulous, doing good. Every time I have tried to plant something in the missing spot right there, other than the weedy grass, it dies. So uh, I've just decided to, that the ladies like to live there by themselves and they can just live there. Over here is Jerusalem artichokes. Now these guys, wild rabbits have dug up every year that I've grown them. And last year I think I had four. So I left them alone. I thought, well, this will be the last year I try them because there's never any to harvest because I have to save them for the next year. And I thought, well, this is, this is the last year we'll waste garden space on them. And look at them. They're absolutely filling that box finally, which is about, uh, I think that circle's five and a half feet across. So there's, there's still empty spots in there, but this year I think I will have enough to actually do a little harvesting and have plenty to replant. So very exciting there. Now, before we look at the greenhouses, I do have to brag on one more thing that I'm so excited about. I know you're probably looking at this going, I see weeds, I see scraggle. It looks terrible. Well, let me explain that I have been trying to grow carrots here since we moved here. Now, I always had good luck with them in Mississippi. Here, we get so, so, so incredibly dry that it's really tough to get them to germinate. At least I've had trouble getting them to germinate. Uh, I know the lovely people up the street at Sprague River Gardens has grown ma marvelous carrots, magnificent carrots. I'm apparently not that kind of carrot grower. <laughs> but this year, because of the in insanely wet spring and because I put a little bit of peat moss over the top of my seeds to keep them moist, by golly, I'm going to have some carrots. Now, I might not have enough to can. <laughs> in fact, I probably won't have enough to can. But we are really excited to at least have some carrots starting to form. Uh, I need to get the weeds out. I've been a little scared to, to take the weeds out until the plants got a little bit bigger so I didn't unroot anything. I did uh, weed out a couple of these rows. Now that's the better bed. I grew two beds of them, but these carrot seeds were sadly very old. And you can kind of see there's not a whole lot coming up in here. But... For a first, first attempt at actually getting carrots to grow, I'll take anything I can get. So here we have the dome, or the hoop greenhouse. Notice, no greenhouse fabric yet again. So I still haven't gotten to this. It's just kind of been on the back burner, hopefully soon. I know you've probably been hearing that for a while. Uh, but I did at least get some plants planted in it. Now, the reason I say soon is because... July 1, I plant sweet potatoes out here, and July 2nd, wake up to 30 degrees. So everything that's in here really needs a greenhouse. Some of these are squash plants that uh, so far are doing pretty well. I've got okra here in the back, and the sweet potatoes, which despite looking tragically sad, are not dead. And then the cucumbers, which are also not doing so hot yet. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be trying to get the cover on this week because obviously this, this greenhouse not doing so well without it. Alright, so let's take a quick tour of dome number one. This is my greenhouses, my geodesic domes. So there are eight beds in these. And uh, so tomatoes are growing in buckets. We've got, now this one... Uh, it's growing sweet peppers and bell peppers. The other ones are growing all the hot peppers. So these are little like sandwich um, snack peppers. You can kind of see I've got some peppers on there. My basil plants, which are desperately in need of water and a harvest. Uh, we got some squash, more basil. Those are green peppers, more basil. These are um, a pink banana squash which I've never grown before they say they'll put up fruit up to 50 pounds which I cannot even imagine we'll see if we get anything off of them and more basil and uh, more green peppers some lemon balm more squash plants some whorehound more green pepper plants 
some more whorehound, and what I think are zucchini, because I lost the tag, but they're starting to, uh, you can kind of see down in there, starting to get blossoms, so that'll tell me here very shortly what they are. I haven't watered in here yet today, so tomato plants are looking a little on the sad, sad side, but we'll go and get them watered here shortly. There are uh, 10 plants, 10 tomato plants in each one of these domes, uh, two by the door, eight around the barrels. No problems with them so far. In fact, you can kind of see uh, this is a Roma. I'm not sure which variety of Roma. Uh, that's got a, some tomatoes on it. You can kind of see a big tomato there. Some of these are cherry tomatoes because I really like to uh, cut those in half and dehydrate them for sun-dried. You kind of see there's another big tomato down in there. Uh, the plants are kind of getting thick, which I've never had happen to me before. So I will probably be breaking out some shears and trimming them off a little bit, trying to get some better airflow in them. But this is everything that's going on in the first dome. All right, so this is dome two. And actually, I planted this dome a couple of weeks before dome one got finished. So here we have some jalapenos. They're doing great. They're starting to flower. Got some acorn squash. I have been trying the whole time I've lived here to grow acorns. So excited. Baby acorns. I think I've got five or six total on the three plants. Kind of see one down in there. So they're doing fabulous. Uh, more jalapenos. I wanted to grow enough to pickle this year. You can kind of see some little jalapenos forming there. Uh, another thing I've always wanted to grow and never had any luck with is my tomatillos. I need to get these guys caged because they're falling over. But they look pretty good. You can see lots and lots of blossoms on them. Always a good thing. Uh, probably more jalapenos. I can't remember off the top of my head. And yet again, another thing of squash that the tag got lost. Uh, they were in the greenhouse and we got some wind. And the tag blew out. So I'm not real sure what we're looking at. But I think they are zucchini. They're either zucchini or crooknecks is my guess. So lots of blossoms and buds starting to form. So I'm just, on, it's a waiting game to see what I'm going to get there. These are uh, some smaller type of, they're kind of like the little snacking peppers. But they're spicy. They're called spicy bells, Cajun bells. And another bed of tomatillos. Again, they look great. I got one caged. I bought some more cages because I was out. And you can kind of see how big they're getting. So keep your fingers crossed for me that I get enough to actually make... I would be happy with just a jar of actual tomatillo salsa verde. Now these tomatoes that are in here were actually smaller plants when I put them in. Uh, nothing in here was over 6 inches. So you can kind of see they are getting there. Uh, they're up, some of them are up a good 18 inches. Uh, I also have some eggplant in here. Most of these are the long. I do have a white. I think that baby right there is a white. They are finally starting to flower. They haven't been in here but a couple of weeks or a week and a half. And then I've got some rosemary growing. Uh, this, uh, this hoop does not have as many herbs yet. I've got some cilantro. And some other things that will be coming in here very shortly. And uh, i got to get in here and pull some grass. Which the rabbits have generously volunteered to eat for me. So, got a lot of work to do in here always. It gets really hot. So by about 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. Even with the vents open and the cross breeze. Uh, it makes me a little dizzy. So I can't really be in here all day. Uh, the barrels are working great. You can actually feel them radiating heat in the evening. So the tomatoes are getting a good, consistent temperature, uh, far more consistent anyway than what they would normally get living here. And the squash and the peppers seem to really be digging that. Um, so that is it for all the garden and greenhouse stuff. All right, so uh, I'm going to just make a couple mentions of what's going on in the rabbits. So we have lots of doves still bred. Uh, hotter temperatures coming this week, so we will be running the misters yet again. Um, we have had the worst year of flies I think I've ever had here. Flies and mosquitoes both. 
Uh, we've been running a bug zapper outside and killing bugs like crazy. Some of it was the extremely wet spring that we had, so we had mosquito problems. Kanan broke out the weed eater and cut as much long grass around the buildings down as possible, and it's gotten better. But if you know much about rabbits, you know that mosquitoes and flies can bring all kinds of nasty with them, from myxomitosis to helping to spread uh, rhinac and other things. So bugs are so important to keep them down in the rabbitry. So this year, you know, we're, we're big on always trying to go with a natural approach to everything. Uh, we've tried the fly traps, the disposable bags, the non-disposable bags, fly strips, you name it. We were getting nowhere to the point where you couldn't walk in the barns without doing this, you know, trying to keep them out of your face. They were getting on the rabbits. Some of the rabbits were getting really chewed up from uh, mosquitoes, which is always a big concern. So we did make the investment to get the stuff from uh, Country Vet, the little metered fly spray, uh, and they actually have the canisters that do fly and mosquito. So they're kind of pricey. I think our starter kit was somewhere around 55, 60 bucks. I'm going to be doing a review on that very, very soon um, because I do like them. They are, uh, you know, certified as being okay for um, commercial kitchens. So they're not as toxic as a lot of other things and we just make sure that we're blowing the mist down the middle of the barns trying to keep it off the rabbits as much as possible and making sure that we're using covered feed bowls um, but we'll get to that when I do my review but so excited to finally have of course not the flies are not completely gone but they are so much better uh, we've got some great looking babies that I will probably be showing you in the weeks to come I've got some stuff that I'm really excited about for convention. We've got baby triantas. I've got some American does that are bred. Um, and some really great looking harlequins. So really, really excited about all that. <sighs> now, if we can just keep everybody alive through the hot. And luckily, we haven't even really hit more than like 90, 92. And we're in July. So this could be a really awesome summer for us. Or literally the floodgates of hell could open in July and August. We don't know yet. I saw that the forecast um, for the Weather Channel is predicting hotter than normal July. But we'll see. I mean, they, they said, you know, a warmer spring too and we didn't get that. So we will see. But that is kind of what's going on in the rabbit barns. So probably the last thing we want to show you this week of hail week or more like hail 36 hours. Beyond the rabbits in the garden is that Nikki spent a lot of time putting together a sign for our farm. So if you've ever <laughs> thought you've stumbled across our property, you now have visual evidence this is us. So obviously Sprague River Homestead, Sprague River Rabbits and Poultry, these are our two main pieces. American Harlequins, you've got an American here, a Harlequin there. We established in 2013 is when Nikki first moved in. 21140 is where we live and then obviously Facebook Instagram and YouTube is where you can find us online so I will admit that the letters are all stencils that you know I traced out but I did hand paint the entire sign I do not get any credit though for the lovely little rabbits on it I was looking at hand painting them I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do and then I remembered at the ARBA convention in Portland, Oregon, like four, almost five years ago, I bought those stickers. They're actually decals from a lovely name, little lady named Laura out of Washington. And they have been sitting in a drawer ever since waiting for that perfect project. So there they went. They did not stick the best. So they have had some urethane applied over the top of them. We'll see how they hold up long term. But um, obviously the fence needs some work not the nicest thing ever that's probably on the agenda for next year but for right now there she is we actually have an official sign i guess we're the real deal now we are the real <laughs> deal we are established so that's it for this week hail week gardening rabbits and we are official we are not fake are we <laughs> fake probably we're fakers <laughs> so that's it if y'all know where that comes from that's okay that's it for this week We've enjoyed the week. Always more to do. Lots of videos coming out soon. I know we say that a lot, but we're starting to hit that midsummer stride where the garden is what it is and it's just maintenance. And so we'll have a little bit more time for video type projects. 
All right, so that's it. We'll see you next time from Sprague for Homestead. Happy homesteading.